In Escape from Tarkov, Labs PvP is the most advanced, competitive, and high reward PvP in the game. You'll almost exclusively be playing with experienced players, so to be successful, you'll need to be proficient in every aspect of combat on the map. In this video, my goal is to get you to that point so you can start clearing lobbies and making millions on Labs, raid after raid. Before we get into it, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash giantbusak or on TikTok under the same name. To start off, you're going to need to know your way around the map, including general navigation, callouts, extracts, and spawns, all of which I went over in a previous video. It's essential that you've either watched that video prior to this one or have complete knowledge of the map layout already. Everything I'm going to be teaching from this point forward assumes that you have the map memorized and are comfortable with quick navigation there under high pressure. First up, let's talk about weapon choice. For labs, the choice is easy. Pretty much whatever you're comfortable with will be viable. The map can easily be played close or long range, as long as you position yourself accordingly. Both semi-auto and full auto will be effective, but you'll want to put your higher tier, higher penetration rounds to use. Most players will be running their best gear, so it's important you're equipped with rounds that will drop them quickly. I also highly recommend extended magazines. While not required by any means, they do give you a higher chance of success when swarmed by a group of raiders or a full squad of PMCs. I died countless times to the final member of a three-man squad after dropping two but running out of ammo in a 30-round magazine. While not every gun can utilize extended mags, it's something to consider when choosing what you want to run and picking which fights to engage in. My personal favorites are M4s, SA58s, and MP7s. M4s have deep mags and high accuracy, but 5.56 tends to let me down pretty often. SA58s hit hard, but even with a meta build, the recoil can be a little unpredictable. MP7s allow you to be extremely fast and agile, but you'll have a tough time getting the rounds to be effective at any significant distance. Whatever gun you choose, there will always be some positives and negatives, but as long as you are confident with it, it'll do the job well. Next up, let's talk about how to move off your spawn. There are many different play styles which you can utilize on labs, but I'm personally most effective in fast-paced, close-range PvP. I find I'm most successful when I push off my spawn immediately, checking every nearby spawn in a lap around the map's perimeter. Most of the PMC spawns throughout labs somewhat line the map's edge, so you're likely to run into a player pretty quickly using this method. You're either looking for a player near their spawn, or listening to the floors above or below you for someone nearby. You also may hear gunshots taking place pretty early on, since lab spawns can be relatively adjacent to each other. If that's the case, you'll want to engage quickly to utilize the advantage of being a third party. The majority of labs PvP happens within the first 2-5 to five minutes of a raid, so identifying player location is crucial. If you don't engage soon enough, player pathing can become fairly unpredictable, putting you at a greater disadvantage. But there are a few very predictable locations for players to rush to at the beginning of the raid, so let's talk about initial hotspots. There are two primary locations which you're most likely to find PvP at the beginning of a labs raid. Black key card room and the security office where red and violet are located. If you've been pushing spawns and haven't run into a player within the first couple minutes of the raid, you can almost guarantee that one of these locations will have a player. Let's start with black room. Black card's been made a bit more accessible recently with higher stock limits per reset for mechanics barter, so you're always going to have players pushing the room. On top of that, with tons of stim spawns and a high chance of a ledex, Black Room is considered one of the most valuable rooms in the entire map. You're able to approach the room from a few different directions. Black Stairs, through Server, either by Black Stairs or Janitors, through First Floor of Main, or anywhere down the hall towards Blue Room, either through Tent Hall, Blue Stairs, etc. To determine the best route when a player is at Black, you'll need to find out if they're inside or outside of the room. If players are in the South Hall or by Server, you may be best approaching from the center of Main. You have lots of positions you can move in from First Floor Main, and can also push through Second Floor Server to eliminate any players that may be in there. A good rule of thumb is never pushing into a room without knowing where the enemy is located inside, so always keep that in mind moving forward. As always, try to bait audio cues with grenades, your own movement, or pre-fires in order to determine enemy position. If there's a player in main, you can approach from the south hall, either first or second floor, and try to close in on their position. You can also utilize positioning by dark offices to get longer sight lines. As always, we want to shoot for right-handed swings and peaks, so keep that in mind when moving up on players. If a player is in the south hall outside black and you want to push from main, it might be best to approach from blue hall or tent hall so you'll have a more distinct right hand. If you're pushing from server, make sure you bounce between doorways to get the best sight line you can on the enemy. I usually only swing out into the hall from janitor's side, as you have multiple right hand stops, whereas towards black stairs, you're extremely exposed unless you run into the stairwell. It's also good to know how to wrap from first floor to second, then drop down the wooden staircase in order to reposition on players outside black. Maneuvering this quickly can easily allow you to take on squads without exposing yourself much at all. 
If the opponent is in Black Room itself, the approach becomes a little different. There are a few visual cues to look for to tell if the player is inside. There are two doorways which lead into the Black Room area, the left of which spawns with the right door open, and the right which spawns with both doors closed. Within either side, there's a locked door which leads into a small room with one more closed door, leading into the actual Black Room itself. You can always attempt to run by the room and look to see if any of the doors are open or closed differently than their normal start of raid position. You can also listen for player movement inside, which you should be able to hear from anywhere surrounding the perimeter of the room. There's metal flooring in the center of the room inside the observation area, which will play slightly louder footstep sounds, another good thing to listen for when nearby. Realistically, when someone is inside black, you can approach from any direction, but just keep in mind where opponent's sight lines could be from inside. You can still see the windows of the various doors when the doors are closed, but it can be harder to see inside than out. Don't leave yourself exposed for too long to any particular window until you're sure of where the enemy is positioned. Whether you're approaching black to players inside the room or out, you have the advantage of versatility. You can push and reposition in multiple different areas, while it's common for the opponent to feel stuck on the defense at black. If they're outside the room, there aren't many safe areas for them to reposition to, as someone could be watching from any area in the south hall, and someone could be watching from anywhere in the center of Maine. There's a chance for them to run to black stairs, but that does make them exposed to the south hall momentarily. There's the option for them to run to janitors, but then there's the risk of getting pinched from server and main. You should always try to keep the opponent at or nearby black with positioning and grenades in order to retain confirmation of their position. This will make swings on them much easier as once they get away from the area, it can turn into a bit of a repositioning chase from both parties. I do want to add a little more context for trying to take out a player that is inside the room while you're on the outside. It can be tricky to spot them through the blurry windows, but you can shoot through any of them. I usually try to run and jump by the outer doorways in order to bait a shot, then pre-fire wherever I heard the shot come from directly after. With some practice, you can do this quickly enough where they won't have time to react to your repeek. It's also worth bringing up that players can camp on top of the hazmat suits inside either entrance to the room. It's easy enough to spot players' feet when running by the room, then just swing inside to take them out. It isn't very effective for an opponent to sit up there, so just give it a quick peek whenever you're about to step inside. The other major location that PvP is fairly heavy within the first couple minutes of a raid is at the security office, where red and violet rooms are located. While many people don't have red keycard, violet is fairly accessible, so players looking to loot will definitely rush to be the first one there. There's also a green keycard spawn in the security office, another reason to be the first one in there. Aside from loot, there are a few spawns which are pretty close to each other in the north end of the map, which always causes a bit of congested PvP in this area regardless. While there's only one doorway to the security office, players can also exit via breaking the window towards the lobby. If you approach the office and determine that a player is inside, my best advice is to force them in or pull them out. One great way to do either is using grenades. If a player is in the office, you lob grenades from the lobby through the window. This will be extremely hard for the player inside to avoid if they don't have the ability to take cover in violet or red. If the player is sitting in violet, you can lob grenades from the staircase directly in front of the office door without exposing yourself at all. If your nade is good and they push back into violet, you can use the opportunity to rush the office to close in and control the fight. If they run out of the office, you have an easy kill as they'll be stepping out completely staggered with no cover at all. If there's a player sitting in red, it's actually very easy to push into the office and control the corner with the right hand. They'll be at a definite positional disadvantage, making it another easy kill for you whether they step out or not. If you don't have grenades, you always have the option of using raiders to stagger the enemy. When pushing parking switch, there's a chance that raiders can spawn right by the cafe, which will definitely put some pressure on the enemy, potentially allowing you to catch the right moment to confirm the kill. If you run down to the basement and hit main switch, raiders could spawn in lobby or somewhere else in wreck also allowing for further pressure. If you have no luck with raiders and don't have any grenades, my best advice is to occupy yourself nearby for the time being until the opponent steps out of the office. They need to leave eventually and only have two exits, the door or the window, so it's very easy to keep eyes on both while looting or fighting raiders nearby. For both black room and security office, my personal opinion is that you don't want to be the person stuck inside. If you want to loot these rooms, clear the area first, then loot. You're always at a disadvantage if you're the player inside the room with the opponent outside. If you're concerned about getting loot, there's no use in getting it first if you end up dying anyways. If you loot black to get stims or lead X in your pouch, you'll probably break even if you die, or maybe make a minimal amount of profit when you consider the price of an access card, your gun, and your ammo, which to me just feels like a waste of your time. Clear first, loot later. Let's say you've passed through spawns close by to you, you've checked for players at black and security office, and you've won the fight or maybe had no fight at all. There are a few areas which tend to be pretty heavy for PvP closer to the middle of a raid, which you can expect to check next. These areas are Freezer, by Parking, and by Dark Offices. All three of these have one thing in common, which is that they have a lot of pathways leading to that location. Players will either pass through these areas through general pathing to get to a loot spawn quickly or even just to look for players. Let's start with Freezer. 
when we talk about freezer fights, we aren't just talking about next to freezer door. We're talking about everywhere from cafe to back hall to outside of freezer toward hangar or even underneath in the wood hall. The amount of repositioning that can be done here is pretty insane and makes for some really fun fights. Let's talk about all the paths you can take to lead to this area to utilize for repositioning. You have back hall, freezer stairs, second floor main, and kitchen with a doorway to both the wooded area of the cafe and behind the cafe counter. For each of these areas, you can loop from one to the other very easily. From kitchen, you can exit the cafe, head south, then wrap east to the front of the hangar and push freezer from there. From back hall, you can drop through the window and head up the freezer stairs or the stairway in main. From cafe, you can pull back towards Skybridge and take control of back hall. You can even take advantage of sight lines from Skybridge through the glass elevator. The list of methods for repositioning in this area is endless, so you always have the opportunity to switch to a better position in order to have a better chance of winning the fight. For parking, we have a pretty similar scenario. Lots of fights seem to take place right around parking because there are halls which lead to the basement and toward the south end, stairs which lead to the switch for parking extract as well as stairs to yellow room, and players passing through cat to look for loot. All of this allows for a high chance of crossing paths with another PMC. There are infinite scenarios which could occur here, but let's go over some of the most common. If a player is in yellow room or parking switch room, you can easily nade them out from below through the windows or take shots from second floor wrecked through the parking garage window. If neither of these options are possible, they are both small rooms so you can swing inside while pre-firing to take out the enemy, but only if you know exactly where they are in the room. If you push in blindly, it can be a death sentence. The opponent can also only exit through the door they entered, so worst case scenario, wait them out. If a player is in parking itself, somewhere between cars or on the edges of the room, utilize the second floor window to your advantage. It provides a little more cover than yellow or parking switch and gives you the added benefit of dimmer lighting. You can also break it and use it as a drop down if needed. If a player is in Z hall or zigzag hall, utilize any window in the second floor or wrap around to the other side of the player's hall if needed. I always try avoiding fights in zigzag hall as there's too much competing for a right hand angle, but do keep in mind that there's a stairwell which leads to the basement. If a player is in zigzag hall and you feel the need to push inside, I'd only recommend going through the basement and entering through the stairwell as it gives you an immediate right hand and the ability to reposition it far away quickly if needed. If a player is second floor outside of parking, I usually avoid both the yellow and parking switch stairs. It's too predictable to push from either position and also easy for them to track your movement with a wood flooring. I'd also avoid running through parking itself unless you're hugging the wall under the large window. I typically feel better off pushing from lobby stairs or any of the stair sets surrounding cat as again, you can reposition more easily to multiple directions. For example, if you're pushing from lobby stairs and need to fall back, you can turn around, run through boiler, and push up the stairs in front of the yellow or admin office. Play around with all these options and offlines to build up your speed at utilizing them. Lastly, let's talk about the dark offices. Players like to hit them because of the high number of computers as well as rare spawns and safes. You can push the offices from, again, multiple directions. The stairs on the west side of either office, the stairs to the east from first floor main, second floor by yellow, second floor by green, and also potentially anywhere from below if the opponent isn't hiding within the office itself. These offices provide little protection as grenades can be thrown in from every direction. They're surrounded by breakable windows and the majority of surfaces within the office can be shot through. I find that the best way to approach opponents in these offices is your typical right hand swing. If someone is in yellow dark, you can best approach from the west stairs. If a player is in green dark, you can approach by green room. You can also utilize opposing staircases for great positions as well. For example, if someone's tucked in the corner of green dark, you can move up the staircase next to yellow dark to get an easy sight line on them. You can also drop down from second floor fairly easy. Just make sure you try to land in the planters or on a box down below so that you don't take damage. If you can't tell exactly where the opponent is in an office upon first glance, they're almost always tucked in the corner or standing on a safe or a cabinet against the wall. If they're anywhere else, they'll likely be pretty visible. When fighting players outside dark offices, verticality is your friend. As someone that needs to be close to the enemy to win the fight, I'm always trying to bounce between floors, maintaining cover to get as close as I can to them. Sometimes, if needed, you can even drop back down blue stairs and come back through parking to hit the offices from the opposite side, or vice versa. You can even push further back through south hall and second floor and peek out by green, or head under managers as another completely different option. Again, the possibilities are literally endless, which is what makes this map so complex. Practice in offlines, memorize different paths, and build up the speed at which you can cycle between them. Lastly, these are of course not every single hotspot in the map, just some of the most typical. But practice these locations and the same mechanics can be applied anywhere else. Moving on from hotspots, I'd like to quickly touch on some navigation tricks. These are just some area specific mechanics and general mindset guidelines to keep considering throughout the map. 
In both rec and main, you of course have balconies lining the second floor. There are sections of raised walls which you can run along to use as cover from either direction. These will be your primary points of solid cover when navigating these balconies, aside from scattered equipment and boxes. While running along the balconies, I recommend running on top of the short walls that line the edges. This way, if you need to drop down to the first floor at any point, you can just take a step to the side and easily see what you're going to land on. If you aren't on these walls, you need to take the extra time to jump, which can leave you taking damage as a result of the extra height. Between rec and main, you also have pretty tight drop downs on either side, which can be useful for switching floors more discreetly. You should also memorize where all your stairs are, which lead from the center of both rec and main to their respective second floors. These provide more drop down opportunity if you time your jumps right, allowing you to avoid taking damage from a longer drop. When passing through many of the halls in the map, it can typically be beneficial to hug the left wall. This will allow you to jump from cover to cover quickly while maintaining right hands the entire way. Do keep in mind though that any of the tent or tarp like materials in the map can be shot through. There are various door frames which can be shot through as well. Even though these spaces are extremely tight, you are fully capable of shooting through them. Whenever moving through halls that seem empty, don't make assumptions. There can always be a player that is basically invisible to you, but you're completely visible to them. Always run in a zigzag pattern through long open spaces if you aren't completely sure. There are also various parkour heavy locations throughout labs. There's too many of these to make a complete list, but just always try to push the environment to its limits. You can often use various objects for navigation that you wouldn't think would be possible. For example, navigating from the rock wall up to Skybridge. Or jumping on top of the containers and hangar. There are a lot of these throughout the map, so be ready to practice a bit in offlines. Let's move on to how to force player movement. There's a couple of approaches to take here. If you're moving through a raid and are pretty certain there's another player in the raid, but you can't find them anywhere, there's a chance they may be looking for you too, and you're just in opposing areas. One way to possibly pull them towards you is by hitting extracts. If you hit med block switch, for example, and the opponent hears the announcement, they'll likely want to check the hall where med block is located to see if they can spot you nearby. You can also hit the elevator itself to make them believe you're trying to get out, further baiting them to come your way before you leave. If neither of these work, you can just run around and hit every switch close to you in an attempt to spawn in raiders. This is a great way to expose player position since raiders will very quickly aggro to any player in their proximity. You can also use the raiders positions to rule out a player being in a particular area. If you know there are raiders wandering around second floor near cat and they aren't fighting anyone, you can probably assume that there isn't a player in cat, cafe, yellow, or any other nearby point of interest. One other great way to potentially pull the opponent towards you is by breaking glass. Dark offices, cafe, admin, server office, and a handful of other areas have breakable glass. In labs, glass breaks are almost always audible across the entire map, so you can pretty much be certain that the enemy will hear it regardless of where they are. This can also be used to distract the player from your position, but since we're on the topic of sounds, let's move on to audio in general. Audio in labs is, at the time of making this video, a little all over the place. Since a lot of it is unpredictable, I'm not going to waste time talking about the audio characteristics that are questionable and likely not functioning as intended. What we will talk about though is how audio can be used to develop an educated guess as to where an opponent is located. First up, let's talk about the wood footstep sounds. There are two different types of wood sounds, the solid, deeper sounding wood and the fragile, thin sounding wood. The more fragile sound is applied to the majority of wood staircases throughout the map, minus the smaller ones leading to yellow and parking switch. The solid wood sound can be heard under yellow and parking switch, in the lobby, in cat, under cat, in cafe, and in the wood hall by the gym. It's important to recognize the difference between these sounds and their possible locations. If you're in hangar and you hear solid wood towards freezer, there's probably someone in cafe. If you're in black and you hear thin wood towards the center of the main, someone's probably on one of the staircases that lead from green to under managers. Metal footstep locations are also crucial to memorize. Most areas with metal flooring are pretty separated, so it's very easy to use them to define player position. Some notable locations are boiler, zigzag stairs, back hall, second floor hangar, second floor server, black and blue stairs, the middle of the black room, and the catwalk around the dome. As stated earlier, there's plenty of breakable glass throughout the map. One area to be particularly mindful of is dark offices, as both of them need to have glass broken to allow entry. Assuming you've watched my lab's navigation guide, you should also know to listen for the extract announcements. To quickly recap those, 
You're listening for Sector R for Main Elevator. Ты в секторе R. Sector Y for Parking. В секторе Y. Sector B for Hangar. В секторе B. Sector O for Med Block. В секторе O. And Sector G for Cargo. В сектор G. For a deeper explanation on these, head over to the extract section of my Labs Navigation video. One of the most complicated aspects of labs is adapting to the absurd amount of tight and hidden angles players tend to hold in the map. While I can't go over every single angle, since there are hundreds, I can go over some general guidelines to be aware of, as well as a small sample of some commonly used angles. First off, keep in mind that pretty much any long hallway has a chance for a player to be watching from either end. For example, if you're pushing the south hall and you're entering through tent hall, it can be pretty risky if you aren't sure of enemy location. A player could be peeking by blue stairs or black stairs, or in server, or in blue room, etc. Your best bet in these scenarios is to not stop moving at all until you know exactly where the enemy is. Next, there are many doorways throughout the map which have small windows which you can see and shoot through. Some examples of these doors are down by med block elevator or by freezer. If you're approaching any of these doors, always run in an unpredictable pattern in the event someone's watching from the other side. Next, there are many dark areas throughout the map which a player can be holding an angle from. Some examples of these would be anywhere in dark offices, along the walls of parking, or areas throughout the dark halls of the basement under main. Again, your best bet is to always keep moving and move unpredictably until you confirm whether or not the area is clear. Lastly, the second floor balconies lining both rec and main have great sight lines to the areas below. If you want to move through the first floor of these areas more safely, hug the perimeter as you'll have much more cover than moving through the center. I typically avoid moving through the center of these areas until all players are dead and the coast is clear from raiders. A few very common angles you'll encounter are the end of Skybridge toward backhaul, right next to parking switch, outside of boiler toward parking, from freezer facing server or vice versa, from server looking toward blue, outside of black facing toward the center of main, outside med block switch facing blue stairs or vice versa. The list is endless. Keep moving, and if you pinpoint an opponent using an angle, reposition to get as close to them as you can. If they aren't moving off their angle, they probably aren't as confident in close range fights, so use that to your advantage. Unfortunately, like any other map, there are plenty of camping spots scattered throughout labs. I hate the camping play style like many others, so I've made an effort to keep a list of locations I encounter most frequently. The best thing you can do is memorize these locations and give them a quick check anytime you pass by one of these areas. Some of these locations are under the catwalk and boiler, standing above the doorway in admin office, standing above the doorway in security office, hiding behind the table in med shack, standing on the hazmat suits in black, standing at the top of black or blue stairs, proning in any of the map's many planters, hiding behind the gas tanks next to main elevator, and standing on the air duct above wood hall. There are plenty more of course, but that should be a good list to start with for camper hunting. <laughs> Lastly, I want to share my method for looting the map. This includes general looting around the map, looting player bodies, and looting raiders. I personally find it most effective to only do any form of looting when the map is clear of PMCs. There's nothing worse than winning a fight, beginning to loot, then getting dropped by a different player because your focus was on looting rather than clearing the map. Labs is not that big of a map, so taking the extra couple minutes to clear it still allows you plenty of time to loot the whole map after. Do keep in mind that even if you don't enable an extract, waves of raiders will still have the chance to spawn at increments throughout the raid. Even if you're clear from PMCs to begin looting, do retain a bit of attention at any given time for signs of raiders. Again, there's nothing worse than being 20 minutes into a raid, picking up millions worth of loot, then getting beamed by a raider because your attention was focused elsewhere. Always listen for distant running and voice lines. Also, occasionally throw grenades when entering an area you haven't been in a few minutes in order to bait comms. You need to pace yourself to loot the whole map, but it'll be a waste of time if you get killed anyways. And that's going to be it for this video. It was a long one, and of course I didn't hit every bit of information that can be taught for labs PvP, but I believe it's a good starting point to build up confidence in fighting on the map. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.